In the Clone Wars, you'll see Anakin do stuff where it's like, he shouldn't have done that. And and little events will happen that like push him towards the end. Mm. You're, it's going to become very obvious as mm. you move on. Just to see that moment of Marin bringing him back felt so beautiful. And I think about how tragic it is in many ways. Yep. I think about Anakin and I think about man. What if, what if, what if I think of, you know, what if Obi-Wan was the one that died? Yeah. You know, Anakin's consistent character flaws mm -hmm. throughout his journey. Cal has adjusted and maneuvered so much. Yeah. And I think that's what is going to end up making him so great. It's almost like give he, he's starting to give me, not yet because he's still young, but I can see him being like the second coming of Qui-Gon. You know your final rating of this game. I think I'm gonna give it like. Final ratings are tough, bro. Like, I how know. do you compare them to different games? I and I feel like no one actually has like a real rating chart. Like when you yeah. say nine point seven. Uh, yeah, that's why I was glad you like made a channel in Discord. Yeah, and it was like all. It's got to be a little bit more organized. Yeah. Well, when you have like all of your games together, it. It clears it up a little bit more. Exactly. Then I can look at each one and be like, okay, this is what this deserves. And this yeah. is what this deserves. And you got to compare them. Like, it, like, was this game really better than that game? Exactly. And having them next to each other, I can really get a good idea. Because I was just thinking that. Because, you know, I've been playing. I played Battlefield 2, right? I played. Battle, Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2, sorry. Yeah. Battlefront 2. I played the Lego Skywalker Saga. Yeah. I played, um, not too long ago, I played Fallen Order back in like September. Um, and then Survivor. So, so many different Star Wars games to be able to like compare. Yeah. And it's Battlefront's close, man. Battlefront was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really good. Did you ever play that game fully? The Battlefront 2? Yeah. Yeah. Like I completed it. I still play it, honestly. Really? Yeah. Oh, the I play, yeah. Like um, me and my friend, I have like three three core friends that i like play consistently with mm -hmm. we just play uh the heroes versus villains game yeah, yeah, yeah. the 4v4 yeah it's awesome i tried it. it's a great time i like, tried it you, off stream when you're working together like as a like a team oh, like if me so you cam better. and someone else like played like yeah. you you'd fall in love with it i probably would because i jumped into the online but having to play against people that clearly have been playing this game yeah, for like, like the last six years consistently like so so each character you have each character has like their own level so like yeah. my my like boba fett is like 51 that's like my highest one and then my like darth maul is like 24 those so are your like, two mains yeah i'm i mean boba fett um Ooh. Yeah, yeah i like boba fett did they add mando oh so here's the thing the battlefront 2 like lacks so many characters Mm. And then they like they have BD1 as like a playable character. Yeah. Like I know BD1's like faster and more agile, but mm. R2D2 is so like iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you you'll see in the Clone Wars, R2D2 like can fend for himself. I mean, I just got an episode where he's basically the main character <laughs> exactly, in the whole episode. Exactly, exactly. Where um Anakin and who else was it were trapped under the ship and they had to send R2. To basically yeah. go tell the Jedi where they were and basically save them. Yeah. And he's a he's an iconic character, man. He, and he what really other droid is. gets like a full you're gonna attention see, like you're that? You're going to see more of it, too. Yeah. It's what, been where really are you in, good. Where are you in Clone Wars? Uh, I, th I know I just asked in, you the other day, but. I'm on like episode, I'm like midway-ish. I don't look ahead. Yeah. And we kind of just go into Disney Plus and just press play. So yeah, I don't remember you how can't, to... you can't. Sometimes the thumbnails will like, yeah, it'd be like a little. I'm like that with that. all shows. Yeah, I don't read the title. I don't look at the thumbnail, yeah. and I don't read any of the description. Just press play and say I did the same thing for know. like Mando. And yeah, like Obi Wan. It's funny because Bell and I were actually just talking about this yesterday and talking about trailers yeah. and talking about. I remember the days of going to AMC theaters close by here in Framingham, Massachusetts, actually, mm -hmm. and there you would walk in and they'd basically give you like a pamphlet and they would show you each movie that they have and yeah. like a little summary of what it's about. Yeah. And I miss those days, man. Going into things without any spoilers, nothing to even... And, and you can't even... Even on simple apps like uh, like social media apps. Like, yeah. Like you got spoiled in Survivor. Yes, I did. Just by loading up... 
YouTube. Ugh. And it was unavoidable. It's like that with every new game on YouTube, man. I yeah. can't I can't hide from it. Movies too. Like Spider-Verse, like, thankfully I saw it opening weekend. Yeah. If I didn't, th- those following days I went on YouTube and my recommended, because you know on the phone, it's yeah. just like the thumbnail's massive. You can only see like one or two videos on your home screen. Yeah. All just spoilers in the thumbnail. So like if, if you don't know, you went on YouTube and the thumbnail was what? Cal and Bowden? Make out? There was a few. There was no. There was Cal and Marin <laughs> making out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there was one where the title was just like across the thumbnail, Bode's Betrayal. Like, I, and like, like Bode with a gun. I, I'm like, I respect, I respect <laughs> the fact that you want to be first and like you want to like have the most attractive, but then yeah. you're spoiling it for but everybody But there's ways else. to do it. I know. You know, like there's ways to make sure that the thumbnail isn't an obvious character that no one's expecting yeah. or... You know, it, with our channel, we've been trying to kind of be more careful of those things because yeah. we've had criticism in the shorts, like, "Hey, man, the, the God of War one." But on shorts, it's tough because yeah. you don't look for the thumbnail and then click on the video. In shorts, you're, you're scrolling, just gliding through. Yeah. So even if the title's non-spoilery, people are expecting like a, a spoiler buff, like. This video is about to start, yeah. and if you don't want any Star Wars Jedi Survivor, it's just not how it works. Spoilers in three, two, like a countdown. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I can't do that. I will say uh, on, I think Twitter's Star Wars community does it the best, mm. where they they mark it as sensitive content. That's yeah. The creator can mark it as sensitive content, so then you have to hit um, a button to like view the thing. Yeah, it's either that or. They'll do Mando spoilers and mm. then like 85, you, you know, when you hit yeah. return, it like moves you down. Yeah. So then you have to expand the, the tweet. Yeah. Like that, that like. On Twitter, I do. They're good. I they're hide good words. Yeah. I do like block words, hide words. I mean, I deleted my Twitter recently. I was talking about this on yeah. stream. You heard me. Yeah. That's, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. have to go we, into we Twitter. It's just way too. Yeah. Twitter is a fake world, but <laughs> we'll talk about <laughs> that a another different time. Universe. Yeah, it's it's a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but going back to Star Wars and spoilers, that really did ruin my experience for Bode because every time he came on screen, yeah. other than our first couch gaming episode that we did for the playthrough. Yeah, that was when you were safe. It was after that yeah. that I saw it. So now every time I'm with Bode, I'm like, damn. I know. And it's, it's especially just about when. It's especially hard for you as a creator when you're making when you're on the stream, you're making the video, mm-hmm. you have to act like you're seeing it for the first time. You you don't have to yeah. like you Do, don't have to like uh make a big thing out of right. it. Right. But like you have to be like, "Oh, whoa." Exactly. I Crazy. basically I basically have two options. It's either I tell the audience beforehand I've been spoiled. Yeah. And, you know, just it is what it is. But then I can't do that because i also don't know when it happens exactly and i don't know the moment that it connects so there is still a level of not understanding like what it means yeah you know what does even betrayal mean and sometimes a lot of the titles are clickbait yeah so it could be like a lie if if for example it's just so aggravating right when the game dropped i think someone did like a mod of fighting vader yeah and they were fighting him outside so i knew vader oh was, i saw that so yeah. i knew vader was returning yeah but you don't know when because it's a mod and, and i didn't know it was a mod at the time so i'm like oh shit he comes back and it's outside yeah, yeah. so when sears inside inside the archives and vader opens the door I'm like, oh shit! I didn't know it was gonna be then. I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling it was either it was either gonna be another a new Inquisitor, mm. which was less likely because Vader's run into Seer before. Yeah. So I'm sure when he when the call came through, because you could listen to the um, report from Bode, mm-hmm. like him calling the Empire uh, mm. in an echo. Really? Yeah, you, you could hear it in. in an oh, echo. I must have missed that one. It's a it, so. When you complete the game, the environment changes a little bit. New things appear. Oh. So if you go back to like the forest array, mm-hmm. you can, there's an echo there now where you could f- hear Bode picking up Dagon's um, lightsaber. Wow. Like, this feels nice. It suits me. Like he you, says stuff like that. Not until this morning when I was just getting a recap of like the story before we went on the podcast, just so I could remember like, oh, okay, this happened, this happened. Yeah. I realized in that video they had mentioned that his 
the lightsaber that Bode had was Dagon's. Yeah. I didn't realize you that could, in the moment. I was like, yeah. how was he hiding his lightsaber this whole if time? If you go back to the forest array, the echoes there of him, That's sick. of him talking to him. You know, it's an echo, so it's audio. But he's like talking to himself like this works for me. Like It reminds me of yeah. the temple. Yeah. Um, how tragic, man. That betrayal. That broke my heart. It was, it was rough. We're not fathers. Right. So like right. it's a, it's a different thing, because mm-hmm. um, at the end of the day he was just trying to get his daughter to a, like a safe place. He he just didn't want the attraction of the Jedi being yeah. There. But at the same time, you're not the only one running from the Empire. Yeah, yeah. You're not the only one being, and, and he was working for the Empire. He wasn't even being hunted by them. Right. Exactly. He was just trying to get away. Yeah. There's a few you know different ways to look at it because. Obviously, like you mentioned, being a father and clearly that was the attachment that yeah. drove him to the dark side yeah. is his willingness Again, and his attachment to just do anything for his daughter, which yeah. we know as a Jedi, that's yeah. not and, good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want that. But you see, but now you see Cal starting to stray away from that too. Which I love because Marin. we know that, you know, now where we are in the Star Wars story, yeah. right, with Rey at the end of episode uh, yeah. nine. We know that they're leaning towards more of a uh, a restart of the Force and the Jedi and how the Jedi operate and yeah. treat the Force, that there can be balance. Yeah. And being aware of the dark side is and can be a benefit. Yeah. You know, just pretending like it doesn't exist and not wanting to know anything about it is probably a little bit more toxic. Because yeah. that's how a lot yeah. of the Jedi fall. Yeah. It's like, is it we that, don't talk about it. Yeah. We don't look at it. And then whenever the temptation comes, they just crash rather than understanding it, being aware of it. Almost like that saying, like, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Yeah. You know, knowing its power. Yeah. But if if you're not of the strong of heart or will. At the same time, so we see Cal starting to get rid of that with Marin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then at the end of the game, we see him embrace Cal's dark side. Yes. Which I feel like is a little... It's a dangerous game we're playing now. Now we're now we're walking the line. Yes. Know? Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see when they inevitably do a third part. Because if if Marin, if we lose Marin, he's already he's already on the line of embracing the and embracing the dark side. Oh, now you. Have I didn't even think again. of that. If if he loses Marin. Yeah. Oof. That's now, a tough thing you're to on, consider. You, he's on thin ice already. Because he's embracing the dark side. Now he's got Marin. Now he's got uh, Bode's daughter. For some reason, we're totally yeah. carrying her around. But I feel like his journey through the dark side is going to propel him further. It could. Because he's he's gone in it. He's tasted yeah. it for a little bit and seen what it could do to him. And now, like towards the end of the game, he really only embraced it when he had to. Yeah. He needed the upper hand. If yeah. he didn't embrace the darkness against Bode, he's dead. True. You know, like he need to go to an elevated level because of how powerful the Sith is. We know, yeah. you know, they're in, unhinged. In all, yeah, they're, they're unhinged. There's in, no, there's no limits. In what I mean, there's very, there's very few moments I can think back to in the Obi Wan series. You know, him defeating Vader and cutting his mask. But there's very few times Ahsoka as well, which I haven't got there yet. But yeah. there's very few times that you see like a Sith be overpowered you know they're yeah. usually like the stronger foe so i i think his journey is going to be really interesting but i can imagine him losing marin would be tragic but i don't know i think i think he's evolved so much since he we has met him. It, like from fallen order to survivor the the maturity level is like crazy night and day you like see that An- guy went through some shit yeah but he you, went through some stuff and you see years. anakin from the beginning of yeah his journey, right, with Phantom Menace all the way yeah. to Revenge of the Sith. And you're, you're going to see it in the Clone Wars, too. Yeah. Um, He's still kind of consistently yeah. the same stubborn person, yeah. little tweaks in his personality. But for the most for the most part, it's pretty consistent, yeah. right? His stubbornness, his... There's some moments in the Clone Wars. I think you I think you hit one already, um, but I don't want to, like, say it in case you haven't. But it was in uh, one of the Mandalorian episodes. Mm. Um, I, like... I don't want to. Yeah, spoil I'm it still kind of in that time period. Exactly. So. That, I know where you are. I just don't want to spoil it. So y- you'll see, like, i you'll see, and in the Clone Wars, you'll see Anakin do stuff where it's like he shouldn't have done that. 
Mm. And and little events will happen that like push him towards the end. Mm. You're it's gonna become very obvious as mm. you move on. Wow, like extremely, I, extremely. My obvious. the thing that I'm most excited for is to see how it rubs off on Ahsoka because so yeah. much of the show is how much Anakin is already rubbing off on yeah. her. And you see Ahsoka in the Mandalorian episodes, how mature she is. Mm -hmm. You didn't watch the Clone Wars movie mm -hmm. of when they Anakin first meets Ahsoka. Wait. There's a Clone Wars there's movie. There's different footage? There's a Clone Wars movie. I know that. And it's before the Clone Wars series. Oh. Like, it's their first mission. It's the first time Ahsoka meets Anakin entirely. Well, that happens in the show, too, though. Where he meets her, and that's where he gives her the nickname Snips. Uh, Snips, because she's oh, made super snippy. That happens in the show. Oh, okay. If it was on a Chrysopsis or something, some planet, it's like a all teal glass. That's interesting, because this whole time I was thinking that they did like the anime thing where uh, they do like a movie to kind of recap a certain part of like. The show uh, that, that might have happened. I could I could have it all backwards. I haven't watched the movie. I tried watching the movie, mm. and I was just like, it, it was before like the the first two seasons of Clone Wars. So you know those first two seasons yeah. of Clone Wars are a little little tough to get through. Yeah, yeah. So but, I, I kind of lost interest in the movie, okay. and I was just like, <laughs> here. but going back to what I was saying, yeah, you know, Anakin's consistent character flaws mm -hmm. throughout his journey cal has adjusted and maneuvered so much yeah and i think that's what is going to end up making him so great it's almost like give he, he's starting to give me not yet because he's still young but i can see him being like the second coming of qui-gon yeah kind of having that yeah, energy you could, it, it, yeah it's definitely possible we haven't even seen him yet mm -hmm. most likely because he's on Tanor, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Either I'm hoping, like, uh, Survivor had such has such a great. I texted you this too. Mm -hmm. it, it it seriously opens up so much because now it's we know the path works because of um, the Obi Wan series. Yeah. So explain that a little bit for people that don't know. Yeah. So elaborate. The path is kind of like a like an underground railroad mm -hmm. type thing for the um, Jedi. For the Jedi, exactly. Um, created by Seer. Um, which we didn't know until this game. It, they kind of hinted at it before because when we play Fallen Order, um, like she she explains to us that she's going around looking for Jedi and trying to help them. Right. We know so that she's like, trying to rebuild that's like the something. Base. That's right. like the base of it's it. True. You know. It's true. So that kind of hints at it. But in the Obi Wan series, they um, Obi Wan runs into. Um, it's in the town. Um, it's kind of in the middle of the, the season. I don't know the exact yeah. episode, but you could see the it's, writing. It's on Vader's the, first appearance. Yeah, in the show. his first appearance. Yeah, you could see the writing on the wall from all the Jedi. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know the path works to some degree. Right. We don't know it's how been many established. Exactly. We don't know how many end up on Tantalor because Tantalor is like a new new thing for us. Mm -hmm. We saw the path work before we knew the end point of the mm -hmm. path, which mm -hmm. is Tantalor, mm -hmm. theoretically. So now we don't know, like, it's possible that Tantalor is full of Jedi. Full. Yeah. And it would explain so much Yeah, as to how the First Order was able to rise up and where were all of these characters that we know. Yeah. And, you know, to really believe that Rey was the only Jedi in the universe that's existed after everything that's it's, happened. Uh, that's it's just insane. unlikely. It's un insane. It's Especially because we're, we're tracking down... In Fallen Order, you're tracking down the the holocron full of force sensitive mm -hmm. names, mm -hmm. like those names. Those people. None of those kids end up yeah. using that or being recruited secretly. I think it was in one of the new movies. Um, the kid, uh, one of the new movies. I, I think don't. It was really, after Episode Eight. The kid at with the, the end broom, of the movie right? with the broom. Yeah. yeah. It, I don't. I'm like every other like Star Wars fan where like those those last three movies are a little yeah, rough. Very rough. A little rough. Mm, so very, rough. Yeah, very rough. Very rough. Very rough. Very rough. Like I I I watched it once. I haven't watched them again. Um and I, I don't think I will. I've seen them twice through now. 
And Did it make it any no, better? <laughs> no, yeah. actually made it worse. Yeah, exactly. Which is usually the other way around. Yeah, you know, you give you give something another try, another try. You start to see a different angle, and it gets better and better. Yeah. This time, no. This is where I think like uh, no. <laughs> John Favreau and and Dave Filoni, they're like really, put, they're trying to piece it together. I think with like the Mandalorian. Yeah, um, which they are doing a better the, job. The of. Bad Batch, which you haven't watched yet, but the Bad Batch has implications on the movies because mm -hmm. it, it's all about cloning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we saw that by the end with yeah. episode nine. Yeah. You know, that's what... Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. But absolutely the establishment of Tantalor in this game is one of like the most important yeah. canon events in it's recent huge. memory. Now in Dave Filoni's movie, do we see... What's that Marvel moment where like they're all coming through the portals? Do we see, do yeah, we see all game. the Jedi like... Do Probably. we see them coming out in the movies and like somehow that's destroying the first order? Or, that's a question. You know, that's a good question because people are theorizing. Okay, we have the establishment of Tantalor. There is a planet where all these hidden Jedi are being trained potentially. Yeah. Even if they're not being trained, like, like definitely the Jedi, being trained. The, I know they definitely are, but even if they're not, like. There's possible it's possible that like when the Jedi get brought there that they bring significant others there. that now you're having force mm. sensitive kids mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. You could have a whole whole planet of Jedi. Exactly. And it depends where they pick up on the next right. timeline, but But considering where where Survivor takes place and then where we are in the movies yeah. and knowing that they're gonna start doing a lot know, of the sequels of the sequels. Yeah. And we're gonna get episode ten, eleven, and twelve, right? Yeah. yeah. Like it would, enough time has passed that those things could happen, right? Grogu yeah. was supposed supposedly could be an adult by that time, yeah. but for his species, be like it's, at his prime. Yeah. So there's there's just so many possibilities, and who who's to say Grogu isn't on Tantalor right now? Exactly. You know, we don't know what happens Man later. Mando's Mando doesn't live, isn't gonna live forever. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, and there are a lot of theories that the Mandalorian isn't actually about. Uh, Din Djarin. It's no, about, it's not. It's, it's about Grogu. Mandal a Mandalorian, he is the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. And even we saw it in uh, this most recent season. Well, each season, actually. Season one was about Din. Season two was about Boba. Mm -hmm. Season three is about Bo-Katan. Mm -hmm. like, it, it, it's not just about... Yeah, Din's there. Yeah. Um, but it's not just about... It's, they didn't restrict themselves to just Din. Right. So right, that's right. completely possible where, yeah, it's, it's, the same... where they move on entirely when he's ready. Exactly. They're, they're growing everything around him and then slowly telling Grogu's yeah. path throughout it. Because he still needs time to mature. I mean, he, he doesn't even talk yet, yeah. right? Yeah. Just imagine when he can talk still, and he's at the still prime a, of his. A, like a toddler almost. Yeah. yeah. For his species. Which is crazy because he's 50. But yeah. It's just a species. Mm-hmm. So the implications of Tantalor now to the Star Wars Huge. universe, the fact that it happened in a video game yeah. is, for someone who loves video games so much, is just like such an honor to be able to have something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to add to the universe in that way, you know, I really think, and this is what I was going to say, that people are predicting that Cal is either going to show up in season two of Andor mm -hmm. or season two of Obi-Wan, potentially. Mm-hmm. And he could appear in Ahsoka. Cal yeah. has or Ahsoka. Yeah. And that would also explain where Ahsoka is. Because yeah. where the fuck is Ahsoka? Is? She doesn't die, right? No, she doesn't Thank she God. doesn't die. And uh, <laughs> it's actually when you see rebels like pretty close to dying. <laughs> but mm, okay. I don't want to spoil too much. Um because you're eventually gonna watch Yes, I'm, rebels. I'm gonna do Rebels. Yeah. Um I'll probably do it after actually does Rebels take place? It's after before Ahsoka, the TV show now. Uh, yes. Oh, so, fuck. so the series of Ahsoka is, um, from the trailer at least, it looks like a direct sequel to, um, what's it? Uh, Rebels. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. So I gotta we, we finish met, Clone Wars and Rebels before Ahsoka met, comes um, out. Is it, was it Mandalorian? I think it's Mandalorian. We met a Rebels character in the Mandalorian. Mm. Like that's how close we are in this timeline. So you don't. So I I would do after Clone Wars. You could wait on Bad Batch if you really want to. Uh, I I don't think you will after you like meet Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. um, Which I just did. 
No, you didn't. Well, I got their backstory. I don't think you did. You met no? you you met a group of clones. You met, uh, but they called themselves the Bad Batch. Delta Squad, actually. No, no, I'm pretty sure they say we're the Bad Batch or no. something like that. I'll show you the clip yeah, later. Yeah, you're gonna have to show me the clip. But, he, but I, even, I don't think you see the Bad Batch till season seven. Bro, I'm pretty positive. I'm pretty positive. Uh, but anyways, we, we, I would yes. skip Bad Batch because right now my my priority is Ahsoka. Yeah, you're gonna and have especially to. if Cal comes in. Like, I need to know where Ahsoka's at at that time. Yeah, and everything. Yeah, but. Yeah, man, the implications that that Survivor has now brought into the universe is amazing. It being a video game is amazing. Um, the Vader fight, you know, getting to see more Vader, yeah, is is the just more the Vader man. the better. The more Vader the better, man. Yeah, and he's probably one of the best villains. Ever. Of all, we've talked about this, but of all time, like he is, a diff, he's in a different league. Different league. He has a tragic backstory. Which is which, and we see all of. Mm -hmm. You haven't yet, but we see all of his backstory, and now he's just like the most powerful, one of the most powerful Sith like ever. Yeah, and it's epic. Epic. He's so OP, and his, his character design is just sick. Like just like the outfit that he's in, mm -hmm. <laughs> like even that is just badass. It's too badass. Yeah, Vader is by far my favorite villain of all time. For a while there. I think definitely recency bias. Thanos was up there for me. Of course, yeah. Joker's like a classic one. And there's we could go on all day. Yeah. But Vader is just the backstory of the prequels yeah. and the shows. So much empathy that you begin to feel for him. Yeah. And to feel that much empathy for a villain is what attaches you to yeah. everything that they do. Yeah. Because you're like, oh man, like I can't believe you do that, but. I know where he came from. Like I know how he got here. I st I still believe that Anakin's still in there. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so tragic, so tragic to think of. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So um, crazy. How did you like the boss fight with Vader? Because I think the Vader fight that we just did in Survivor is the best boss fight that we've had out of both games. I would say so. I would say so because because even when uh, even in Fallen Order we're we're kind of running from him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like it's. Oh, it's Darth Vader. So you you're scared. It's still fear. badass, dude. Yeah, it's still badass. But like, and to be to play a seer, we didn't get too much of seer, you know. But to to be seer in her final moments, it just it felt like a fitting way to to top off her story. Amazing. Again, the Vader. first character switch that we've had in the series. Yeah. Playing as someone else with different abilities. With different abilities, different and you the, the single saber stance, and yep. every time she would strike, dude, you could feel like how OP she was. People's yeah. health bar was yeah. like to zero immediately. Yeah. Did you, thankfully, I didn't get spoiled for it, but did you see or know anything about Seer being a playable character? No. So that moment hit you as yeah. hard as it hit me. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy, like, whoa. <laughs> that was. It's crazy. Because. And she's also been doing all this archive stuff for oh. for for Jedi. I think that's like a lot of meditating time. And I think that's why she put up such a good fight against Vader. This is a, you can't you got to remember this is a, a young Vader too. Right, still young, yeah. You know he's still recovering from. I don't think he's reached like peak Vader. Mm -hmm. I think he's still like transitioning a little bit from Anakin mm -hmm. to Vader. And I think that's why Seer was able to be so powerful right. against him. Right. Is because she's she's a Jedi master. She's been meditating for a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's not a lot of not a lot of physical battle training, I, I assume. Which, you know, but her force ability was able to. Oh, she was strong, man. Yeah, and and in that Vader fight, she kept up a lot. I mean, at the end she of it, she lost her pretty life. Pretty close, and trading she was, shots. She was really close to killing him. Yeah, I know plot armor and all that stuff, but it, like he, she was really close. Yeah. And it's it's awesome seeing like other Vader battles that we don't know of, yeah. And seeing him take damage and seeing him struggle in certain battles and stuff like that just yeah. added to it. He's not a god, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Still, still a guy in a suit. Yeah. yeah and now thinking that, about playable characters, like that's something that's a new door that opens up for the future of Star Wars yeah, and, sure. and the games. Like, who who could you play as next? You know. It's just off the top of my head, like uh, you know, I'd love to be BD. That'd be pretty cool for a yeah, little bit. <laughs> I know you would. Marin could be pretty cool. Like, oh, yeah. dude, those moments in the game 
when we the first time when we go through her portal yeah holy shit i, I knew it was coming up i was so excited for it too i was like <gasps> i i think i was at work while you were playing it too mm -hmm. and i like specifically stopped working so i could watch <laughs> you play it because yeah. i knew i knew that that um that time period, like that battle that you were in, because it was when the the drill was coming through the temple. Yeah, yeah, it was right after knew, him and Marin's first kiss. That too. Play, that mission was epic. It was so cool. That that sequence, um, Seer, like right when you switch to her, yeah, and and that whole even before the Vader fight, that sequence are two of my favorite sequences in the game. Yeah, yeah, you know, I know people probably really enjoyed the final battle with Bode. I fucking hated it. Yeah. It was absolute you, you torture for me. You struggled with it. It took me, I think, over two hours. And Dude, then I, I had to change difficulties. I'm a pussy, so I just played the whole game on story mode. I'm yeah. not interested in getting like stuck. Mm -hmm. on some, I just want to progress the story. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. I feel yeah. you. I, I'm usually the same way. Yeah. But this time I did Jedi Knight because I, I just really it like was, fighting was, with the saber. It so. looked so difficult. It was fucking bowed. Was like on story mode. Like even on story mode. On story mode, I spent as much time as I thought you were gonna spend on Jedi and I. I didn't know like the difficulties would be that much of a difference. Oh, dude, it's fight. it's significance. The parry timing. Yeah. The predictability of their next move. By the way, if we just want to take a second to talk about the combat, definitely an upgrade on Fallen Huge Order. Upgrade. The stances. Uh, for me. I didn't use cross guard as much unless yeah. it was low level enemies because the striking just took so yeah. long. So when I'm fighting like, you know, difficult enemies, I didn't. I wanted to be able to swing yeah. quick. I used dual wield most of the game. But I found myself switching to single stance at the end though. After doing seer, yeah. I was like single stance is op. Yeah, it's the easiest one, I and I ended up doing it against Bode too. Yeah, I went single stance, but most of the game like. 90% I did double bladed. The, the blaster was probably the most under underwhelming thing. At probably first, one of the biggest disappointments in that game. That's in the true. Game. That's a good point. It At was, first it was like, oh shit, he's got a blaster. Yeah. And then when you realize that it's you have so to clunky. What was it to reload? You have to parry or something? Uh strike, I think. I think was you, it strike? Yeah, I think you had to strike in that stance though. I literally used it for like 30 minutes and I was like, this is shit. Yeah. It sucked. I like that they were it was willing a great to try concept. something new. Yeah, yeah, great concept, but I don't think it ended up working out. No. I don't even know how many people ended up committing to dual wield. Yeah. I don't know. You said you used it. I like dual wield a lot. Yeah. I also used double blade a lot in the Double beginning. bladed was my main, for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, the blaster was just so disappointing. It was pretty disappointing. I, like, I saw it in the... Because I think the... Um, What's it called? The pre-order bundle. Mm. I think that came out first before we saw any gameplay mm. or any uh, hinting at it. I could be wrong on that. Um, and I saw the blaster and I was like, man, that's sick. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to have a blaster. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be more of a... I, I don't know how to describe it. I didn't think it would more be as, effective. As, clunk, as clunky. It was so clunky. You couldn't even aim it. You had to hope that the game knew which enemy you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. You had to You had to be locked on to your enemies yeah. for it to work consistently. I, I barely locked on in general. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for the most part, combat in, in this yeah. game was, was great. And the finishers, the finishers looked a lot cleaner. They finishers were way were more a lot cleaner, um, for sure. fluid. The dismemberment, huge, huge W there. Yeah, huge I'm, W, but I, I feel like after a while, it, I kind of started like forgetting about it. You know, it didn't feel as yeah. significant yeah. after the first few times. But it's like Disney's Star Wars is like not as graphic. It's true. Where it's just like a slash. It's kind of, it's, it's a lightsaber. It could cut through anything mm -hmm. where we're refusing to cut through limbs. I, know. I think it's, I, it needs to I'd be rather there for it, sure. I'd rather it be something in the back of my mind mm. than it not be there at all. Yeah. So. And we had a few dismemberments just like cinematically in this game. Like a, a few. A lot of beheadings. Uh, Ravis was beheaded. Two beheadings. Who was the second one? Uh, the Ninth Sister. At yeah, the beginning, at the beginning when, when we did it. What an epic oh. moment that was. It's time to set you free. That still might be one of my favorite moments yeah. from this entire game. Yeah. Just to start the game with 
Cal already feeling more mature, but yeah. then to get to that first boss fight, just like his body realize, movement, just just how he was sitting there, like being transported. Yeah, you just, you can feel he was like more mature. Yeah, and for him to say it's time to set you free, we talked about this after the couch gaming episode, yeah. but like you could you could sense that there was going to be a switch at some point in this game if he's already leaning towards killing someone out of mercy for them yeah you know because the way that he did it was like merciful he was like i'm doing this for you yeah i'm setting you free he he it was like he was giving her <laughs> a chance to like switch over yeah like this is like this is it if you and, don't switch back over I'm, like i gotta stop yeah and, and because because of how i see you I, you dying is better yeah. than being alive in a sith yeah and he because he researched her too yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, so he Caught probably by her name. he probably knew she probably had a tragic backstory like every other inquisitor that had to switch over. Um so he probably was like man she must be like in some sort of like emotional uh, men, uh mental pain like mm -hmm. constantly. Might as well just take her out of it. Awesome. And that's why I think it's time to set you free was just such a such a great line for that moment. Out of just off the top of your head, give me your top three like favorite moments in the entire game. If you need some time, I can I can give you ones Definitely, that come to me. I th I honestly think uh, it's time to set you free was probably I don't know if I want to put it at one because this is like on the spot, so I'm like trying to think of it in order. Mm -hmm. But it's either one or two. Mm. Vader appearing, always epic. Mm -hmm. uh, that's got to be up there. Um, maybe, maybe Marin when we finally get some closure there mm -hmm. on not closure but uh, confirmation mm. that that's actually like a thing because it kind of hinted at it, it, like the vibes were there, right? You right. know, right. So maybe that. Uh, you put me on the spot with that one. Oh, it's okay. So I'm trying to, th I was trying to think of For it. For me. I don't even know if I would keep, if I like went through the whole game again, like even what you're about to say, I'm probably going to steal one to replace the Marin. Yeah. One. Yeah. I mean, just off the top of my head, it's time to set you free for sure. Vader for sure. I think the, the moment we switched to Seer, that was just such a, like a shocking moment yeah. especially coming right after True. bode yeah. switching sides and killing cordova like yeah that was probably the peak of my emotions in the whole game and it gave you the respawn screen too oh my god so yes that that replaces it you know. that was it gave you the respawn screen and you're like what just happened yeah i thought i was doing good mm -hmm. and then you switched to seer those that was the highs okay, of the so highs for yeah me. i would put that at Definitely, Honestly, I, would, I think I put that at two. I think it's time to set you free one. The bow switch to Seer two, and then um, I already forgot what my Vader name. Vader three because you kind of expect it um, for the, for that type of cell mm -hmm. um, where like the Jedi archives are like being rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Like that's something Anakin mm -hmm. like has to go back to. I just call him Anakin. yeah. Darth Vader has <laughs> to go back to. I call him Anakin all the time. Yeah. My top three uh, would probably be the first one would be Seer. Then it's time to set you free. And then probably Vader, to be honest. Probably Vader. But So we have a similar. Yeah. And then number four is just as far as like enjoyment and just like something that stood out would be, definitely be when we were chasing after Bode and we went to the Imperial base. Yeah. And we embrace the darkness multiple times. I forgot about that. It's like <laughs> that whole mission uh, was was really was yeah. really fucking cool. And then you can have dialogue the that, with the Imperial guys too. Yep, yep. And then at the end, cool. when you're you're choking the officer, yeah. And Marin's like, "This is not you," yeah. and she's trying to bring you back. That was such a wholesome moment for me because l earlier on in the game, when they're on the Mantis. Mm -hmm. She asks him, like, are you afraid of losing yourself? Yeah. And he goes, yes. And she said, we'll be here to bring you back. Yeah. And then so when he, exactly that. Exactly. When he's choking the officer and, and she's there in his ear, that. 
It's, it's so much happened in the game, yeah. bro. So much happened. I mean, we could be here for literally 10 hours talking about everything that happened yeah, in this seriously. game. But just to see that moment of, of Marin bringing him back felt so beautiful because when I think about the Star Wars universe and I think about how tragic it is in many ways, yeah. I think about Anakin and I think about, man, what if, what if, what if? I think of... You know, what if Obi Wan was the one that died? Yeah, and he wasn't raised by Obi Wan. Dude, a what you know? if theories if would be crazy. If oh my god, they should do it. But if Qui Gon raised Anakin, yeah, who knows who he had could have become? I think in many ways, it was always his destiny for sure, and he was probably always going to end up there. But mm -hmm. there are moments throughout the movies and shows that you're like, I wish someone jumped in. I wish someone said something. Yeah. I wish. They were there for him more, maybe more cautious, and and would be definitely more like willing to guide him because of like the certain ways that you could tell that he viewed life, and would give direction to Ahsoka and talk to Obi Wan. Like yeah. there are many moments where someone could have stepped in and be like, "Okay, this is turning into a trend, Anakin. Obi -Wan, we need to be careful." I think. Oh, I think we cut Obi Wan a little bit too much slack on that too. Oh, and, I. And you're going to see it a lot more too in the Clone Wars. Is Obi Wan gave Anakin a lot of leniency. I completely agree. And I then, think Obi Wan is I think it's, massively to blame, which is why that moment in the show is yeah. so great. Because he's like, sorry, I failed you. And yeah. you're like, good, Obi Wan. You should say that because you did fail him. Yeah. You really did. Yeah. You did not much yeah. to raise him in the way of, of, a, of a great Jedi. Yeah. And if Qui-Gon was there, so to see someone like Marin when he's turning, like really step in and yeah. even before the fall, telling him. And that's one of the perks. Anticipating of, it. I think that's one of the perks of the attachment mm. is if, if there's right. somebody that can bring them back. Right. But it's also, it it's thin ice because it could also be the fall of that person. Right. If, if you lose them for good. The attachment is what could send you to the dark side, but they not having any attachment could yeah. be the people that save you. Yeah. You know, and if Obi Wan, he, he called him his brother, yeah. right? On Mustafar, it was like, You are my Anakin. Are you my brother, Anakin? Yeah. Like, were you really? Like, did you really make the effort to to stop what you saw was coming? Yeah. So to, to see Cal get that moment, which. Also brings me back to what we were talking about earlier in the future of Cal's journey. Mm -hmm. I think potentially, you know, losing Marin could definitely push him over the edge, but getting moments like that where he remembers Marin and how she saved him in that moment. I think even if she dies, the memory of, wow, she was there for me. She was yeah. willing. She wouldn't want this for me. Even if he does turn, I like he would be he would be a weird case because even if he does turn, I don't think he helps the empire. He doesn't go evil. He doesn't go evil. I That's think why he, I think, I think he just pulls he's a great like, Jedi. He pulls like a like a Luke and like just disappears, mm. which mm. was stupid. But yeah, so stupid. That's sad to but see. By that, the way. I can't see him fighting for the empire. Never. Um, or or just being like a Sith. Never. It, it just wouldn't make sense so, like, because of where how far he's come now. Maybe that's a little bit of plot armor for him not to turn. It's tough. It's I, I don't think Cal turns. I think this journey is is establishing him as like a true gray mm. Jedi where he's completely balanced. He dives into the dark side when necessary. Yeah. Only when necessary. Yeah. And for the most part, he lives balanced. Like the way of the Jedi according to uh, The Last Jedi, is supposed to be over, right? Mm -hmm. That there needs to be a reformation of how the Jedi see their values and yeah. how they see attachment, how they see all these things that could protect them. And I think Cal is going to be like the prime example. version of that, yeah. example of that. You know, what, what Qui-Gon could have been in his later years yeah. after the fall of the Jedi, where he could really like put his flag in the ground and be like, it doesn't work. See, let's go with my way. You know, he really could have been a pioneer in that, in yeah. that lane. And because he died and, um, I don't think that's really Obi-Wan's personality. We, we could see him change, but by yeah. the end, you know, we know he was hiding and stuff. So I think that's really going to be Cal's journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that 
it's a big hope, but I know he's a video game character, but I really think he could be like the North Star of the future of the Star Wars Cinematic Universe. They have their actor. They have the actor. They he's have their still actor. young. Yeah. <laughs> he's Cal from the game and everything that you've set up for him could just lead to him really being the pioneer of everything. Yeah. The next the next big star. Exactly. Yeah. And I hope they do that. I hope they I hope Disney sees the success, right? Cuz yeah. you know the sales went well for that game as well. It's Definitely. a sequel, so it's it's kind of hard to bring in new players and new viewers, and but I really feel like Survivor was I think Survivor is kind of a better I think it had I think Survivor and Obi-Wan had like the the Obi-Wan series. I think it had like the same end goal kind of. Mm. Um but I think Survivor I honestly think Survivor was more well um well rounded. Know, yeah, more well rounded. I think yeah. Survivor's a better game. I think a better story, better yeah, experience. The story line, I think the storyline was a little better. Doesn't not to say that Fallen Order wasn't good, yeah. but just in comparison, they took the stakes way higher. And you know, we haven't even talked about Dagon that much. Yeah, um but, Dagon, you know, he was he was a great villain. Uh definitely without him, you see Bode coming. Yeah. And Dagon was a great distraction yeah. for the story and the plot. And I, I forget his name. Who? Oh. The um Ravis? Ravis, yeah. I I just watched a video, like the recap video mm -hmm. too. And I still forgot his name. But. It's okay. I'm, I'm horrible with names. Yeah. <laughs> horrible. Yeah. Well, it's a big galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I think even Ravis was a good, was a good boss fight. Oh, great like, boss fight. Great know, boss fight. I, I like that. He like begged for the warrior's death. Mm. Like, like Honorable. He, he wouldn't. He wouldn't fight with us either. He mm -hmm. he fulfilled his commitment to Dagon, uh, Dagon, and that was it. Yeah. yeah, I felt like we didn't. It was like uh, I don't want to compare it to Seer, but these characters were we're not getting too much of their characters, mm -hmm. but we're getting just enough where it's like, all right, it's not too much, mm -hmm. but we know their story mm -hmm. and we know their impact on it. Yeah, so I think uh, Dagon was a great. Great villain in the game. He right. had in the 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 last fight with him was awesome. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Better than the Bode one. Yeah. Uh, if we're gonna do boss fights in order, it's probably, um, oh damn. No, it's definitely the, it's, tough. it's definitely the second Dagon one. But first would be Vader. Yeah. Second would be the second Dagon fight, and then third, honestly, would either be the first Dagon. Uh, appearance yeah. when he comes out of the fucking chamber thing that was awesome or Back ravis because fighting dagon for the first time i don't know why but for some reason when i saw the trailers and stuff i was like oh maybe he's gonna be an ally maybe mm -hmm. he i should have seen like you know the fucking silver hair and he looked kind of villainy well, you know, but he had he ignited the lightsaber the first time and it, he hadn't made it bleed yet Mm -hmm. So it was yellow, which mm -hmm. is good for the it's good for the Jedi. Yeah. But then to make it bleed, and we haven't even talked about that. Yeah. Watching that happen live. That's mm -hmm. a, not live action, but that's the first time we see it happen yep. in Star Wars where yep. they, where the, they make it bleed. Mm -hmm. Epic moment. Yeah, I was I was in a recap I was watching today. They said it's happened in a non-canon animated show or yeah. something. And it's happened in the comics. Yeah. So this is our first time seeing it in a canon event yeah. uh, on video, which is amazing. That is definitely another moment that I would put up there with, you know, playing Seer the first time, seeing Vader. Yeah. Uh, definitely wouldn't change my top three list, but up there. Yeah. Because the unexpected twist, the voice actor was so compelling. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't help us save Tantalor. Like he was just so angry and seeing him make it bleed was... Yeah. Such a dope. Fight, you gotta man. think he's been in that that tank for like I think they said like over a hundred years, yeah, right? Over a hundred years, 200 maybe years? two hundred years, two hundred years. He's <laughs> he's sitting there and he's probably playing those those thoughts again and Wh again and again. And we and know he is sorry. because when Cal touches the the thing, he goes into what we thought were flashbacks, but yeah. were in many ways probably 
him in that tank going through his memories. Yeah. And then noticing Cal there by using the force or just, you know, having that Cal connection. Cal, like, inf- infiltrated, infiltrated his thoughts. His thoughts, exactly. You're not here. Mm-hmm. And then you come out of that cut scene and his hand is on the tank. No. Oh. So that shows that he's probably been replaying yeah. those moments yeah. over and over for two hundred years. That's just that if that, if that's me, I'm not out. And that's <laughs> why it made so much sense that right when he came out, yeah, make it bleed. I'm going dark side. Yeah. He had made his mind up. He doesn't need to be conscious again and be like, yeah. "What's the world like and now?" He, he's like, "No, he I've no been idea. tortured for two hundred yeah. years." And he doesn't he he doesn't even know that the the order fell. Not, he knows nothing. He knows nothing. He has no idea of the the mass genocide of the Jedi. Nothing of that. He and even just, when Cal he told him. his mission, mm-hmm. Tantalor. Mm-hmm. That's all he cares about. Mm-hmm. Which ultimately leads to his, his attachment, attachment to Tantalor. But. Which was cool to see because in so many ways when we see you know Jedi go to the dark side, it's an attachment to a person or to an ideology not necessarily like a planet or a, a hope for like you know the future civilizations kind of thing you know yeah because his attachment was what tanalor could mean as a planet yeah. not the love for his child like bode yeah. not for the love of his wife like anakin so it was cool to see that his attachment was a like a thing yeah. like in a you know a, a place of it was almost like an addiction to something yeah and his addiction of like wanting it to work yeah. and be successful. You remember? Cause he, in those visions, he was having people come to the planet to yeah. check it out, to make sure that it could happen. And, and that got to Cal too, where he was like, what, what about my addiction of fire? Uh-huh. And, and that was the conversation that he has with Marin, Marin on the Mantis. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's like, I don't, you know, am I too, am I getting too attached now to, to this idea of Tantalor? Yeah. Cause he started getting, you know, yeah. attached to it too. So, there's there's so many moments in this game that made me so happy because there were layers and yeah. it was deep. It was a great story. Great story. It was a great story, especially for a video game. Like in the shows is one thing because you have, and I'm sure they had plenty of writers on Survivor, but it feels like there's a lot more in depth with the shows, mm-hmm. like how the lines have to be delivered in like certain ways. But in the video game, it's just like. It's hard to explain. It's just driven home a mm-hmm. little better because they have control of every little movement in the mm-hmm. characters. Instead yeah. of it, it kind of took the human factor out of mm-hmm. it, the actor factor out yeah. of it. Actor factor. <laughs> um, but like the like having control of their of their like body movements to hit like every little detail on how they wanted like the lines delivered. It, it's incredible yeah. and. I know that you don't play story games as much. I don't, no. But, you know, I've been doing a lot of story games on the channel. I, when I first started, I was doing a lot of multiplayer games. Now I've been doing more story games because that's really, like, I'm passionate about story yeah. and yeah. characters and motivations and stuff like that. Things that better resemble, like, real life and what we go through. Because yeah. I feel like, as a kid, you know, a lot of the lessons that I've learned in life are were through film, were through television, were through yeah. video games. So I connect a, a lot deeper. But just thinking on like the last five or six games that I've played recently, mm-hmm. right? I played God of War, Ragnarok. I played Hogwarts Legacy. I played Arkham Knight. Just beat that game. Yeah. Uh, I went through Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4. Um, I'm playing Zelda right now, Tears of the Kingdom, and Survivor still. Obviously, I'm a little biased because I'm already invested in the universe. Yeah. But trying to remove that a little bit, the story is the best that I've played in the last, you know, 10 months or so. It is, uh, even though I don't play many sequel, um, like story games like yeah. that, this sequel feels it moved the ball so much. Mm. It wasn't like a, like a little, it progressed the story a lot more than. I think most of us thought it would. Yeah. Like it, it progressed at a ton. Mm-hmm. We went from like an immature Cal, like trying to figure out what he's going to do mm-hmm. um, as a Jedi um, fighting the empire to now he's got now. He, Tracking I mean, down the holocron that has the yeah, information like, of the four that. sensitives and then destroying it by the end of the game. Now, do you think he regrets that now that he had, now that he's taking has over the Has to bring those people. Yeah. Honestly, probably. Probably. 
Because probably he's, he's de- he he has to take over the the path now. Mm-hmm. After I think he says I think he says it um, at the funeral scene or something like that, where uh, like he's not gonna give up on the path. Like he's gonna take it over. Yeah, so, something to that effect. Um, be completely wrong. No, no, no. So. You're right. That sounds similar. And then Seer shows up and yeah, yeah. And force uh, show, show 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 her, her the, the way. The way. Yeah. yeah. And they're on Tantalor now. So yeah. Um, yeah, man, crazy, crazy implications for the future. Uh, such a jump in maturity in Cal's character from the first to the second. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we first started this journey, I don't think any of us thought it would go this far. No, no way. And I, d- I certainly didn't. Definitely didn't. I certainly didn't. I was like, oh, cool. You know, like another Star Wars game and another and story. It, I didn't make the connection in my head because obviously the Obi-Wan series came out a lot. Uh, a lot earlier and we see the like the, we see the path we hear mm. about it we learn about it but we don't know who's running it or any of that and mm. now this fills in that whole gap yeah. that's huge huge massive man so excited um let me get your final rating of this game where do you i know you don't play many story <clears throat> games yeah. and there's not much to compare it to but out of 10 out of games that you've experienced considering gameplay considering cinematics considering um, you know, and anything that you can think of, even issues with the game, right? Yeah. That's something we should actually mention real quick uh, before I, you give the final rating is how much this game struggled on release. It was unplayable on PC. Yeah, it was rough. I even had a crash on my PlayStation. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely graphics are beautiful, but there are moments where it's, I'm, it's I, not... I, when I say it's rough, I, I mean like for on my Xbox, I, I play Xbox. Yeah, you had a great X, experience. I had no problems. Yeah, I had a, I had a few I had a few times in the cinematics where like the, the rendering was struggling a little mm. bit, but still like compared to PC and PlayStation, it was pretty. Compared to the PC, especially, it was pretty seamless. But um, yeah, but so your it, experience it wasn't moments. that bad. But yeah. for the you know majority of people that are watching this, yeah, maybe yeah, you yeah. struggled with it, and it was kind of a bitch to play it at first. You know, so considering. Those flaws as well. Definitely some render issues. Um, going to uh, uh, what was that planet? Uh, Dagobah? No. What What was the second planet? The the planet that was created for this game. Uh, J- where, where J- we have uh, our Kobo. Kobo, where we have Kobo. our settlement. Yeah. Uh, Kobo. When I first played it on the PC, like just could not render in anything. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's been much better on the PlayStation, but you know, I lost the opportunity of being able to do mods and stuff and. Yeah. You know, which if I want to do mods now, I would have to start the game over. So, um, you know, not too many flaws in this game. The disappointment with the with the blaster as well. But considering yeah. all those things, where do you where do you think this think, game lies? I think probably like personally, from like my playing experience, nine point two. Nine point two. I didn't have the struggles. With yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. You know, which would bring it down a little bit. But I didn't have that. 9.2. Um, it progressed the story so much. It was a beautiful game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mechanics felt great. Um, the story was fantastic. Fantastic. I didn't get spoiled on any of the twists. Yeah. So I, it was really like jaw dropping when when Bode, not not just Bode turning on. I like in the back of your head with Star Wars. You, every time you meet a character, you got to be like. He's probably he might turn on us. Yeah, you know, but him being a, a former Jedi, that was a real shocker for me. Mm-hmm. That was just like holy shit. Yeah, I mean, he betrays us. Yeah, you're chasing him. You're just thinking he's fucking working for the Empire, and all of a sudden, yeah, he uses force the force. Pushes, like, you didn't even realize it. No, I didn't even realize. He, it didn't I was, even like process in your head. <laughs> not until he whips out the saber. I'm like, yeah. Did he just force push you? Because when he force pushed me. And I'm still like hot about the fact that he betrayed us. Yeah. So like I'm watching it, but I'm in my head too. And I'm just like, I can't believe I'm looking at Cal. Yeah. And I think, oh, maybe he just shoved him because I wasn't looking at that part of the frame. Yeah. But then to get that surprise too on top of it it is just crazy, man. Yeah. I I would probably give this game like a 9.3, 9.4. Yeah. uh, Right around what you gave it. Um. I think, you know, those extra 0.2 is probably a little bit of bias and already being connected to the universe and yeah. feeling the weight of it. Yeah. Um, 
but you know th- Huge that's implications, the, man. that's the investment that you get from creating a universe yeah. and taking your time and building something um you know and and I can appreciate when games do that you know continue building on the lore continue taking from you know other sources of media your movies your shows your and of course no one has done that better ever in uh in the history of art than Star Wars you know yeah. Marvel is definitely starting to make a run at that but no one has done it as well rounded as Star Wars. Yeah. So fantastic game, man. Um can't wait for Survivor <laughs> I know, Three. I can't wait for the next one. Survivor Three. Jedi Three. It's probably gonna be called like the Path or something. Oh. Jedi the Path. Jedi Hidden Path. The Rise of the of the Hidden yeah. Jedi. Part, oh my god. Part two. <laughs> Rise of the Jedi part two. Yeah. I'm gonna have it's to gonna have be awesome, I'm gonna have man. to have to have you on for that one, man. Yeah. Another couch gaming episode. Hell yeah, man. Thanks yeah. for coming, bro. I appreciate you. Anything you want to say to anyone before we head out? No. No? If you watch didn't watch... Watch Clone Wars if you haven't. Yeah, watch Clone Wars. <laughs> a lot of people... A lot of Star Wars fans, it feels like like kind of deny the the animated series. There's a lot to unpack there. And it ties into games like this. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. on Fallen Order, you see a ton of Clone Wars Easter eggs. Yeah. Not a lot of people caught them. Mm. Other than the fact that you were had like the whole grand army of the republic dismantled yeah. but yeah yeah i definitely uh i can't wait to finish the animated show then do rebels before ahsoka so that's my mission yeah. guys thank you for tuning in if you didn't check out our first episode of our playthrough of survivor for couch gaming we did it together bunch of commentary him being the biggest star wars nerd in the world i had to have <laughs> him that i know personally i uh, had to have him on so i hope you guys enjoyed the discussion bro yeah. thank you for coming thanks for having my me. dog Appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. Love you guys. Peace.